imagine you're riding the Paris Grace Paris. It's 24 hours since you've had any type of sleep. It's dark, it's cold, it may be raining, and you're a solitary rider on the road. And all of a sudden, you glimpse this figure in the distance, frantically waving their arms, and they are wearing one of the volunteer vests. And your brain tries to register, what exactly is this person trying to convey to me? And as you get closer, you hear the sound, secret control point, secret control point. And you realize it's absolutely important that you don't miss the secret control because without the secret control, you may be a DNF. Therefore, this video is all about the secret control on the Paris Press Paris. For more information on this topic, I've turned to my fellow randonneur and two times Paris Press Paris veteran, Joe Todd, who is the most efficient and well-organized randonneur that I know. I hope that you learn as much from him as I have enjoyed interviewing him on this topic. My name is Joe Todd and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia in the USA. And for the past 12 years, I've been riding with Randonneurs USA. Paris Breast Paris is an event that I've ridden twice and I've ridden a few other 1200K and 1000K brevets in the USA. Normally, I'm one of the slowest riders in a brevet. To counter that, I try to prepare myself and my bike very well. Um, I got into this by, after riding some century rides, I got into riding brevets out of a curiosity to see what I was capable of, and it just went on from there. Secret controls are unannounced or undocumented, uh, mandatory stops, checkpoints, uh, like any control in randonneering where you have to get your documentation that you pass through there. The difference is it might be in PVP, and I've only seen one in the U.S. in 2011, my very first brevet. I've never seen another secret control since, but the idea is someone will step out in the road and say, stop here. And in PVP, they have volunteers flagging uh, the times that I've seen it. I guess I've seen three or four in two PVPs. And to keep you from passing it, they'll be animated and stepping out into the road with a flag or something. And you'll recognize them by the color of their shirts. All the volunteers have the same color shirt. It changes each PVP. So the idea is the secret control is an unannounced, undocumented, but mandatory stop where you will get your card signed. I do not believe, I'm not certain, but I do not believe that there's an electronic mat to record the passage of your bicycle frame plate with the radio frequency identification tag on it. I don't think that passes there. And the reason I say that is because when I look at my brevet card from 2019, where they had two secret controls, there is no, no typed written uh, passage documentation of passing St. Nicholas, the location of the secret control twice. However, it is noted with a stamp and the signature and the, t the initials and the time inside the card. The purpose of having a secret control is ostensibly to keep people from cheating. That is a person, a rider could conceivably, and I don't know why you would, but they could cut off a segment of a route, uh, shortcutting the route. And if they put a secret control along that segment that has been cut off, the person would miss it. They wouldn't have documentation that they followed the correct route. and. That would be a DNF, I suppose. I've never heard of it happening, but that's the reason they have it, to keep people honest. I expect there will be secret controls, at least one, two, could be even more because the route has changed and I haven't studied the route in comparison to the 2019 uh, route, but because the possibility exists and maybe there's more possibility depending on the twists and turns of the route, so that I would expect to see at least two uh, maybe more. Now, when you get your brevet card in France, it would be interesting to open it up and look for the spots in the card that say secret control. And I think I'm looking for the card now. There was only one spot on the way out and one place for such a, for such a secret control. There was, yeah, there's only one page in the booklet in the brevet card for secret on the way out and one on the way back. And where all the, I don't know if you can see that, but all the other, sorry, all the other towns have their stamp. And then there's one like here that's just says, it's kind of blank, it just says secret. 
and that's where they put St. Nicholas put their stamp in there. But there's only one of these blank squares like that that says secret on the way out and the way back in 2019. How visible are these controls? Well, not very in my experience, and it's very limited. And of course, the brain is very tired at that point. But as I said, it's a smaller location. Uh, you aren't expecting it. So there's a volunteer to sort of jump out in the road and yell at you. The, the guiding thing, I think it would be hard to miss if you're in a bulge of riders because I was extremely sleepy on the way back in 2019. I came to just following all the other riders in the huge crowd. They all seemed to be pulling into St. Nicholas and I was so tired. I just wanted some food or water to get off the bike. And I heard a British man say, this is a secret control. And I said, really? And he said, you didn't hear the volunteer just tell us that. And so I wasn't paying attention and I was too tired. But so that was a good catch that the fellow told me that. And I went and got my card signed in addition to whatever else I had to do. There. As far as the layout or the amount of facilities and services available at a secret control, I can't say for sure, but I tend to recall that it was less than normal. They did have food at St. Nicholas. The mechanics, I don't know if I saw a mechanic because I didn't need one. Um, so somewhere between nothing and a really nice uh, control that's got everything. It would be food and some services uh, and of course bathrooms, uh, but maybe not as much, uh, possibly not mechanics. So somewhere in between uh, something less than a full control. As far as the parking at a secret control, I think it would be again less than say Ludiac or another place with plenty acres of parking. But uh, yes, there will be a place to park, should be a place to park, there was before. Uh, but it's not, it's the picture again, the sheer number of people. If there's 500 or 1500 bikes coming, you know, at, you know, at the control, secret control at the same time, there's got to be uh, pretty substantial parking facilities. Negotiating a secret control, I guess it just came to mind, but in a spreading, spreadsheet where I plan the stops, there's no place for secret control. So maybe I better add that. One thing I do think is a good idea is a stopwatch on a stopwatch function on your wristwatch or your phone, something that you can start as soon as you stop the bike and time yourself and have it so that because it's very easy for 30 minutes, 40 minutes to slip away and you don't realize you've been there that long. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try to remember to do is to time uh, at each control and I would do the same at a secret control and try to get in and out of there since it's not part of the ride plan spreadsheet try to get in get what you need and get out uh, as far as the elapsed time that a rider might expect to spend at a secret control I would think that it would be less than a regular planned control because the distance and your planning for food replenishment water rest and everything is based on uh, this this is not part of your plan so I would think that it would be less than uh, the time you'd spend at other controls, but I can't see because of the parking and the sheer numbers and the waiting at the table, if there is a wait to get your card stamped, they're very efficient at that. They have plenty of volunteers, but I would think it would tend to be closer to 15 or 20. I don't see how you could do it in five minutes. It's possible depending on the crowds that are there at the moment. As with any other control, the same at a secret control, the only mandatory thing, and this has been drilled into me, is you must get that card signed. Everything else is optional. Food, water, you can get that somewhere else. You can do without. There's lots of ways around that, but there's no substitute. You've got to get that card signed. But the last time I was at Ludiac, uh, I was so tired and sleepy, I looked for the sign that pointed. It's a very large parking lot, and there's a large sign on a pole that points towards control where you have to get the card sign. So that's what you want to do. But the wind had blown that sign and twisted the pole such that it pointed at two locked doors. And I was so exhausted that I went up to these locked doors, not following everyone else. I just went to these two locked doors and pulled on them. And of course, that didn't help. So I finally had to look around and figure out that the sign had moved and uh, I felt pretty stupid, but I found the right place. On behalf of everybody watching this video, I would like to extend a huge vote of thanks to Joe for taking time out of his busy schedule to educate us and share his knowledge with us. If you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button. And if you would like to see more videos in regards to interviewing Joe about various topics related to the Paris Press Paris, please subscribe to this channel. Until the next time we meet, 
please ride safe.